Welcome to another video. Well, hey there, guys. This video is all about China, drones, and uh, YouTube production quality. Right, the first thing I'm going to talk about is shooting in public. Now, most YouTubers can get away with shooting in a room like this or setting up a studio in their apartment or something, but that works for certain kinds of channels. That works for, you know, gaming channels or people that are giving political opinions or anything like that, or, you know, computer review stuff. However, if you, like me, are making videos about a place, somewhere like China or, you know, anything to do with, I'd say, an exotic place or travel or whatever, you know, there's no point in sitting indoors. And this is a big mistake a lot of other sort of, I guess, China, Japan, those kind of vloggers make, is they sit indoors and they just talk about stuff. And you know what? It's boring. People come here because they want to see the country, right? They want to see what's going on. So that's why you shoot outside. So actually showing it while you're talking about it is way better than just sitting in a room like this and talking about it because anybody could do that and I could do this this kind of thing anywhere in the world I mean there's no point I may as well be sitting in I don't know the UK talking about China you wouldn't know but if I'm standing outside in Chinese streets showing you China it's different however there are plenty of drawbacks to shooting outside and I'm gonna go through them very quickly number one it takes a lot of courage it may not seem that way, but if I go out there, because I'm shooting solo, I don't have a cameraman. If you have a cameraman, it's different, right? If you, especially if it's a Chinese cameraman following you around. Um, of course, people kind of think it's normal, maybe a, a TV show is filming or something. But if you're a foreigner by yourself setting up a tripod, all of a sudden you'll get a circus basically surrounding you, all wondering what you're doing. They're curious. Some of it's very harmful curiousness. Some of it's quite malicious because they're suspicious of you. What is a foreigner doing here with a camera, you know? Because there's still a lot of, um, I, I don't know how, how to put it really, but there's still a lot of animosity towards foreigners and there's still a fair amount of people who suspect that foreigners with cameras are spies. And I'll talk about that a little later. So I get shut down very often by security guards and police and, you know, just people in general come and, and spoil the shot. And it's so distracting when you're trying to shoot and people come and stand in front of you, in front of the camera, to look at you or to look at the camera, and oh, it's, it's really frustrating. But, of course, I'm not complaining too much because I've decided to do this now as pretty much a full-time job, this whole YouTube thing. So, it's my job now. I've got to put up with all the hassle of shooting outside so that you guys can enjoy the scenery around me. Number two, you do need to know whether or not you're allowed to shoot in public. Of course, it depends on the country. Now, I've been to Japan, I've been to India, I've been to Taiwan, all these other places, and of course I've made vlogs, I've got all those versus videos in Hong Kong and all that. And you have to kind of understand the local rules of the country that you're going to, you know. Some places you just aren't allowed to film in public, some sensitive areas you're not allowed to film. Now right in the beginning of this video, you see that shot of that really impressive looking building? It's a big Shenzhen landmark, and I really wanted to get that on the drone before I had to hand the drone back. So I went out there kind of in between typhoons and set up and took off and um, I got almost got into a lot of trouble because that's a government building and uh, they thought I was a spy, you know, a foreign spy. And I suppose I probably looked like a foreign spy because I was dressed in my suit, you know, with my sunglasses on, standing in the middle of the public square like flying a drone over a government building, a surveillance drone. <laughs> So yeah, that almost landed me in a lot of trouble. Number three, you have to make it an interesting place. I mean, for safety's sake, I could just go to the roof of my building, which yes, I am uh, definitely guilty of doing that every once in a while because it's easy. There are not that many people around. In fact, very few, just some people hanging up washing sometimes. You can go to the roof of my building. I can go to like a hidden little stairwell somewhere. I can go find a little place in a park or something where I'm out of sight of most people. It's safe, but it's boring. It's boring for the viewer. You guys don't want to see a bunch of trees behind me. You don't want to see, you know, just a, 
the, the roof of my building because there's no movement, there are no people behind, there's nothing interesting going on. So it's all about choosing an interesting spot and it's something that, you know, I really suggest you do. It's also a lot more of a hassle though and uh, like I said before, you get hassled a lot. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how to actually vastly improve your production quality. Now, it's not all about gear, right? I'm sure you guys have noticed this is now in 4K. If you haven't, you know, changed it to 4K, you should because, you know, I paid a lot of money for this equipment, for this setup so that I could bring it to you in 4K. If your TV or monitor doesn't support it, well, turn it up to 4K anyway. You'll see, you get a lot, of, a lot more detail. Although that's not always a good thing because you'll see all the sort of zits and hairs and weird stuff on my face, uh, but that's just par for the course, you know. <laughs> just gonna have to deal with it. Anyway, now buying gear is of course a good way to up your production quality, but there's like this little trap people get into, and I'm gu guilty of it myself, and that is just thinking that buying a nice shiny new piece of equipment is going to improve your videos, and actually that's not the truth. The real improvement comes from you learning how to edit correctly, learning how to shoot correctly, uh, and then putting it all together. Now, you can take a person who's really, really good at shooting, who knows what he's doing, and give him some really old, like 10-year-old crappy camera, like an old DSLR or an old, even a point-and-shoot camera. And he gets the right lighting, he gets the right shots, the right pans, and he will make something that looks like it's supposed to be on TV. Whereas you give someone who's an amateur like myself, really expensive camera with really expensive gear I'll go out and I'll shoot something and it'll look like a, a just a, a crappy sort of a home movie now I'm trying to improve I've, I'm constantly trying to improve and you know if I look at my older videos I cringe because you know they're really really pretty bad but you know that's that's how it is it's a progression right I'm teaching myself I'm not a film student or anything like that so I, I kind of enjoy it to be honest to see how my videos are improving for my own personal satisfaction I should say and uh, that's another thing I suggest you all do is even if your stuff isn't great, just put it out there, you know, get it out there for people to see because that's when people will criticize you and say, hey, your audio sucks or, you know, that sucks. I can't see what you look like or the lighting's bad. And then you can start to improve and it really helps. So getting your stuff out there is great. Now, most of you guys know that DJI lent me a drone for a month. And uh, the condition was that I put the little logo, the little DJI logo, down at the bottom whenever I shoot, you know, film aerial shots. And at the end of the video, I must put up a, like a splash screen to say I used the Phantom 4. Which for me is absolutely fine. It's a small price to pay for getting hands-on experience with a drone for the first time. And I have to say, and I know this is going to sound like a sales pitch, but I have to now convince all of you that it's not because I've given the drone back. I didn't get one for free. They didn't pay me anything. They just let me use it for a month. So you have to understand that what I'm saying here is just absolutely genuinely what I feel. And what I feel about the drone is it's amazing. Okay, it has brought a level of professionalism to my videos, or I should say production quality, not professionalism. Uh, a level of production quality that I simply couldn't have dreamed of before. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed for, for the past while, for quite a while now, all of my videos start out with an introduction of just random street shots. Now, there's a reason why I started doing that, and that is because I talk about China all the time, and, you know, it's all good and well, like I said in the beginning, to talk and talk and talk, but I like to show what China is like. So I just go out every day or every couple of days I go out and just take a couple of clips, sort of one-minute clips here and there, of real life in China. So you can see what life is like on the streets. So it's not some nonsense, you know, like set up shots or anything. I actually go out and just grab little pieces of life and I put it up there at the beginning of each one of my videos so that you guys can get a very sort of clear picture of what's going on here in China. And you know, they say a picture speaks a thousand words or, or something along those lines. I fully believe that. So I hope you guys enjoy those little intros that I do. And also in the outro, I tend to leave a, a longer one of just some random stuff. The reason for that is so that you guys can get a good idea of what China is really like. Now, that's good and well, but on the street level like that, um, it's very interesting. I enjoy it, but imagine if I can suddenly throw in a kind of an aerial shot into all of that, and it, like this, for example. It just ups the game. And as an introduction, you know, um, an establishing shot is what it's called in the sort of professional circles. 
If you can start out with an establishing shot using a drone and then cutting into, you know, sort of the usual on the street footage. so much it just really for me it's so satisfying to see you know how much it improved my videos and you know I hope you guys agree if you don't agree let me know in the comments like seriously I am curious because I am planning to save up and buy one for myself just simply because I found it so fascinating well not fascinating what am I saying I found it such a massive improvement now there's there's one thing I have to say that I've learned using this drone because like I said, not a sales pitch, but that drone is so easy to learn how to use. I took it out of the box like 10 minutes, like no, not even 10 minutes. Basically, five minutes later, it was up in the sky. I was really worried when I got up. I was like, well, you know, if I break it, I have to pay them. And it's like 9,000 <laughs> RMB. So I was nervous and I took it all the way up into the sky and I was trying to get it as high as possible and it lost signal. And I was really like, oh boy, what am I going to do now? But it's really smart with all its GPS and compass built-in stuff. It just basically, when it loses signal, after a short while, it comes home automatically and it lands pretty much within, I'd say, a one, one or two foot radius of where it took off every single time. So, you know, even if the battery is running low or something like that, it will automatically come back. You know, I only had it over the course of a month, but during that time, um, I learned all sorts of cool things to do with it. You know, on the Churchill channel with Sea Milk, we were going out into, you know, the rural Chinese countryside and taking drone shots. I'm going to tell you guys that was a pain in the ass because we'd have to go out and shoot our actual episode, which takes, I don't know, an hour or so. Come back, fetch the drone because I didn't have a backpack. It was just in like a big box and I had to like um, strap it to strap it to me and we had to ride out and set it all up and kind of remember exactly where we'd ridden and then get these shots. But, you know, it was worth it in the end. I think it came out great and it added a lot to that channel. Um, so anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is after learning how the drone works and learning the kind of shots you can take, I also learned something very valuable and it's something I, I kind of expected or suspected from the beginning and that is don't use too much drone footage. I know when people get a new toy, a new a new gadget or something they tend to overuse it and you see that in a lot of YouTube channels of people that have drones they'll have a video and like the majority of the footage is drone footage or a huge amount and I guess it's kind of like if you get a box of assorted chocolates you know all those different kinds and different flavors if you sit down there and you just like munch the whole thing and finish it in one sitting yeah you'll enjoy it you'll be like oh yeah this is great but then you'll kind of feel a little sick and you won't really want to eat that kind of thing for a while, right? However, if you just kind of control yourself and you have one every once in a while, it's like the, it stretches out the enjoyment and you don't get oversaturated. So I don't know if that's a very good analogy that came into my head, but basically the idea with the drone shots is keep them short, let them complement the rest of the footage. Basically think of it as uh, the spice rather than the meat of the video. Now I feel kind of lucky to be living in the city where the best drones in the world are made. You know, the DJI drones, because I'm not going to beat around the bush. They really are the best. I have tried like the Parrot, what is it, Bebop and some other drones, and they just kind of, they can't compare. Uh, I know that Xiaomi also here, here in China is going to be making a drone. Um, I don't know, I'll check it out when it comes out. But right now, at least, the best drones in the world are the DJI drones. And I'm going to be going to give a little speech because, you know, part of this whole deal was I get to use the drone for a month and then I'm going to go and basically tell people at this event what I thought about the drone. So on the 13th of August, they're having like a huge new pilot experience, I think is what it's called, where they'll be showcasing all their latest technology and, you know, people are going to come and be able to try the different things. So I'm going to go there and make a speech. I'm going to make a video about it so you guys can see what all the latest and greatest drone technology is here in Shenzhen. 
So I think that'll be quite an interesting video, at least for those of you who are interested in, in drones. So um, that's, I guess, pretty much it for this video. I really want to say once again, thank you to each and every one of you guys out there who subscribe to my channel, watch my videos, my patron supporters, guys, you know, I can't wait to get more content out for you. And uh, until next time, as always, guys, stay awesome.